Next, we have member statements. The member for Hamilton West, Ancaster, Dundas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The riding that I represent, Hamilton West, Ancaster, Dundas, is a newly created riding, and I am enormously proud to have been given the opportunity to be its very first representative in this House. You know, as it is widely known, Hamilton uh, has a proud history of strength in our steel industry and the good-paying jobs that have contributed to the well-being of our city. But, Mr. Speaker, what is not well, as well known is that, in fact, uh, education and health care is the largest employment sector in Hamilton, and its largest employers are Hamilton Health Sciences, McMaster University, and Mohawk College, all of which are located in my riding of Hamilton West and Castor Dundas. You know, we're known as hard workers who are engaged in our, neighbor in our neighborhoods, and we lend a helping hand to those that need assistance. So, Mr. Speaker, it is with that same sense of community in mind that I would like to mark a significant event that took place at St. Joseph's Villa in Dundas this morning. A ceremonial groundbreaking for Margaret's Place, a new hospice, marked the launch of their Gift of Love campaign. In Ontario, governments only cover approximately 60 per cent of operating costs for hospice, hospice care. So, With Margaret's Place in Dundas, it is a comfort to know that those suffering and their families will have access to high-quality hospice care in their time of need. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Oakville. Uh, tomorrow will mark the start of the 2018 Special Olympics held in Anganish, Ang Nova Scotia. The Special Olympics is a great event where hundreds of people aged eight or older from across the country will compete to qualify for the 2019 Special Olympic World Games in Abu Dhabi. This year will mark the 50th anniversary of the Special Olympics, which was started by the world-famous Canadian medical doctor, Dr. Frank Hayden, who lives in our neighbour riding of Burlington. Dr. Hayden was a pioneer in intellectual disability research, especially as it pertained to children, and he was the first to disprove the long-held belief that children who had intellectual disability are not capable of participating in play and recreation. Last week, I had the privilege of meeting a constituent, Aidan Lee, who will be competing in the Games. Aidan is 15 years old and will be competing in the swimming events in the Games. He is a dedicated athlete who cares about the well-being of his teammates. Aidan visited my constituency office on Friday to share his knowledge of the competition and ask for Ontario pins for all of his teammates from Oakville that they could proudly wear. Mr. Speaker, I want to wish all the athletes from Ontario, especially Oakville, all the best of luck when competing later this week. I know they will represent their province and their communities with the utmost com commitment to the competition and respect of their fellow athletes. I look forward to meeting with Aidan and his teammates upon their return and to share in the celebration and recognizing their efforts. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brampton Centre. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the people of Brampton Centre for the opportunity to represent uh, the community I've called home since the day I was born. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, all members that were involved in my campaign uh, and the opportunity to be here today. Uh, growing up in Brampton, I've watched us transform into the ninth largest city in Canada. We are home to Jacuzzi Park, a 100-acre park that is in the heart of my riding, where families in our community gather every week to celebrate and connect. We are also home to this country's largest transportation and manufacturing hubs, moving this province's economy forward. Uh, we are also home to uh, some of the world's greatest uh, entrepreneurs and artists like Alicia Cara, Rupi Kaur, and Director X. And while I was knocking on doors in my riding, I met with thousands of people um, who all indicated to me that one thing was clear. They wanted change. They wanted a government that was going to represent them and put their needs first. And so I'm so proud to stand here and be that voice for my community. Um, and I look forward to representing those diverse voices uh, in this legislature. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On July 23rd, I had the opportunity to stand with Mayor Scarpetti, colleagues and staff for the unveiling event, market, uh, marking the York University's Markham campus uh, latest milestone. The York University Markham Center campus will be located in the west of Markham Pan Am Center and will offer more than 20 degree programs, including business, 
education, information technology and software. Here are just a few numbers of the impact for the new campus we made. 4,200 students by 2024 will have access to teaching, learning and research. 400 plus on-campus jobs will be created. $500 million in economy benefits from the construction. $37 million of annual impact when it will be fully operational. The opening of the 2021 campus will benefit many residents of Markham and York Region, allowing them to gain the skills and knowledge in order to be part of the 21st century economy of Ontario. This expansion was made possible through investment made by the provincial government of Ontario, and its events like this will allow our government to invest into our children's future. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for St. Catharines. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to take a moment to recognize a remarkable member of our community, Mr. Fred Bowering. Fred is a community advocate in St. Catharines who takes it upon himself to fight for the compassion action to be taken in the opioid crisis. He rides his bikes to places like Centennial Park and to the downtown public library to collect and dispose of discard needles, sometimes filling multiple containers a day. In 2017, Fred was struck with a needle at a local park, but thankfully did not contract any illness. In one year, Niagara EMS observed 335% increase of suspected opioid overdoses. These needles are at our libraries, in our parks, children's play areas, and near our businesses. We need to take action to be taken on the opioid epidemic in our city. I am thankful we have people like Fred ensuring our commun community is safe. However, more needs to be done to ensure people in our community are safe from harm. I hope this government will listen to the people like Fred and implement a safe injection sites in Niagara. Member statements. Member for Don Valley West. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, one of the reasons that uh, I am in this legislature and I was motivated to run in 2003 was because we had a government in the Mike Harris government that did not respect local governance. So it pains me, Mr. Speaker, to rise today to express my concern and the concern of many, many constituents of Don Valley West and beyond who have already contacted my office regarding the Ford government's perplexing last-minute scheme to meddle in Toronto's municipal election. As our Liberal caucus has already stated publicly, this bizarre action on the part of Premier Ford creates chaos in Toronto and in Ontario. This erratic proposal to unilaterally cut Toronto City Council in half jeopardizes Ontario's strong economic growth by sending the message that and to send that message to the world that Ontario is a risky place to do business. This is a highly undemocratic proposal. It does not respect the process that the City of Toronto and the regions went through. It does not respect the people who have raised funds, who have paid out of pocket to campaign for election. There was no hint of this erratic action during the election campaign, and the Ford government has never asked the people of Toronto about this proposal. No matter what the Premier may say, travel and rallies are not the same as consultation, Mr. Speaker. Il est tout simplement it's irresponsible to proceed that way, to change the way it is now. The number of councillors for Toronto, Mr. Speaker. The way Premier Ford is treating Toronto is wrong. It is vindictive, mean, and undemocratic, and it should stop. Next statement. The member for Barry Springwater, Oral Medonte. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to celebrate 18 flag raisings across Simcoe County. They're happening over the next four days. These flag raisings are in support of Fierte Simcoe Pride, and there are proclamations from most municipalities in Simcoe County. This is Fierte Simcoe Pride's seventh annual Pride across. Simcoe County, which features various family-friendly, community-oriented events over the course of two weeks. The celebration of the LGBTQ2+ community brings pride to communities, big and small, and has support from all 18 municipalities in the county, as well as Canadian Forces Base Borden, Rama First Nation, and Beausoleil First Nation. 
This year features the first ever two-spirit powwow organized by the youth of Beausoleil First Nation, as well as the third annual Trans Pride March in Orillia and the fourth annual Sim Simcoe County Pride Awards. The awards honour LGBTQ2 plus individuals, allies and supportive organizations. They're doing work to make it safer and more inclusive in Simcoe County. This work makes our communities better places to live, work and grow. Details of the awards can be found at www.simcoepride.com. Minister Wilson, Minister Mulrooney, Andrea Kanjan, Jill Dunlop and myself would like to wish them a fantastic two week of events. We also would like to congratulate the award winners that will be feted on August the 11th. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statement, the member for Tamiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. As uh, we are all aware, uh, Northern Ontario is being ravaged or has been ravaged by forest fires uh, in the last few weeks. And on behalf of um, the residents of Tamiskaming Cochrane, I believe all Ontarians, I would like to express our sincere condolences to the family of Jerry Godwa, who uh, lost his life mm -hmm. fighting uh, fire in northwestern Ontario. Um, firefighters and People who uh, respond to emergencies are a special breed. Yep. They go to danger, when, and they help the rest of us flee from it. And to his family and to all the others who are fighting these fires to keep uh, our family safe, our sincerest thanks and our sincerest condolences. And for a brief update, uh, the Lady Evelyn fire has uh, been held at, uh, I believe, around 30,000 hectares. And uh, the Perry Sound fire, I believe, is the hot spot right now. And I'd like to also, um, this is a very divisive place, but we give credit where credit is due. And I would like to thank the MNR and the minister responsible for the work that they've done. There's been no effort spared, along with Emergency Measures Ontario and firefighters and uh, other workers from other provinces and from, the, uh, from America and from Mexico. It's uh, been a united effort, and I'd like to thank everyone, Fires and please stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Barry Innisfil. Mr. Speaker, I'm very excited to stand in the House uh, to wish athletes for my riding of Barry Innisfil good luck as they leave to compete in the 2008 Special Olympics Canada National Summer Games in Antigonish, uh, Nova Scotia. There are 260 athletes travelling from all from Ontario to compete in the Games, making it the largest team attending. Mr. Speaker, I would like to personally congratulate Joey Ira, Christy Alford, and Nicholas Cunningham, who are competing in the athletics, and Amy McTavish, who is competing in swimming, as well as Mary Ann Lotus, who is competing in bocce. These athletes earned their place on the team through hard work, dedication, and their performance at the 2008 Provincial Spring Games, which took place in Guelph. Mr. Speaker, I want to inform the House that Christy Alford holds the OFSA record for the 100 metre as well as two gold medals from 2017. Mr. Speaker, I urge everyone in this House to go to specialolympics.com to be able to follow their athletes across Ontario. Good luck, Team Ontario. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Peterborough, Kawartha. Mr. Speaker, I too am rising on uh, Special Olympics Canada. For the next seven days, a uh, number of athletes will be competing in Antigonish, Nova Scotia, and Ontario once again has a very strong contingency of exceptional athletes. I'd like to publicly acknowledge a number of those athletes who will be competing from Ontario or for Ontario from my riding. In the A Division of Soccer, Brandon Van Sickle and Dylan Armstrong. In soccer, Nicole Hewitt, Brian Davis, and Candace Bushy. And lastly, I'd like to uh, acknowledge one particular athlete who's distinguished herself in a number of disciplines. This is her second Canada Games that she'll be attending. Her name is Lisa Butler, and she is competing in five events. The 400 meter, the 800 meter, the long jump, 
the javelin, and the shot put. As I like to say, it is her own half decathlon. I'd like to wish all of those athletes the best of luck in Nova Scotia. I'm sure they will represent us very, very well. And most importantly, I wish them a safe journey back home. Thank you. Thank you very much. Reports by committees.